You've probably heard of police detection dogs. You know the dogs are able to find bombs and drugs and search for survivors in the rubble of earthquakes. Well, remarkably, they've even been able to find some more unusual things, like bed bugs in the furniture of New York's apartments. And that's a pretty powerful nose. It's a nose so strong that it can smell one to two parts per trillion with a T of airborne odorants. That's kind of like taking all the noses in a sold out stadium and condensing them into your nose. Which is why if you have the right kind of dog, one with a obsessive play drive, you can train him to find pretty much anything when you associate his toy with a certain smell. That's why I'm able to work with a Belgian Malinois named Pinkerton to find something a little bit more unorthodox. Because I'm studying this endangered species of primate called the black crested gibbon, and they're kind of like these opera singing trapeze artists who swing through the canopy forest of southwest China. Now, they're also only about two feet tall and covered in orange fur. But, uh, I mean, the, the real tragedy is that there's about 1,500 left in the world because almost all of them live in these mountaintop nature reserves where below about 6,000 feet, all the forest has been cut away for agriculture, leaving behind these terrace fields of grain up the sides of the mountains. And we call that habitat a sky island because the gibbons in the mountains way up there aren't able to come down, cross the valley, and meet up with the gibbons on the mountaintop way over there. So one of the first things that we have to do to conserve them is to understand how genetically fragmented these different groups are becoming so that we can focus our conservation efforts on the genetically distinct ones. But to do that, you need a whole bunch of DNA samples and you can't just you know, climb a tree with a cheek swab kit and ask a gibbon nicely. No, you need to find the one thing that every gibbon, every primate leaves behind in the forest. The DNA sample with the most lowly of origins the fecal sample. But there's a catch here, right? Because after all, how do you find something brownish green on a greenish brown forest floor? Well, this is where Pinkerton comes in because his nose can smell what my eyes can't see. And when we walk around the forest looking for gibbon scat and, and stumble upon something with potential, Pinkerton will lean in, take a big whiff, mull it over, and if it's the right stuff, he'll lay down, put his paws on either side of it, and wag his tail, all in exchange for 30 seconds with his tennis ball. So after a year of hiking through those mountains, we've been able to find enough DNA samples that we're actually gonna have a real conservation impact on these gibbons for the future. And best of all, thanks to internet crowdfunding, I was able to bring him back home to live with me from China.